let's talk about this liquify filter for a bit. Has anybody played around with liquify before? A few of you. Okay. Um, now it can be used for good. It can be used for evil. Did you guys use it for good or for evil? Both. Okay. All right. Um, it's not, you know what, whenever you're playing around with something for the first time, it's take it to the extremes. Like I see people, they'll call up like, you know, a curve and they want to see what it's doing. So they'll like nudge things one little pixel at a time on the curve there. Grab that slider, crank it around and see what happens. I've got two layers here. This one's my retouching layer. Re touching. And here's my original layer down below. Which of these should I be liquefying, do you think? Neither. Neither. Well, exactly, actually. <laughs> I was hoping it would take a long time to get to it. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, I'll just make a merge, a, like a copy of this background here. And if I retouch this, if I liquefy this retouching layer, that's all it is. It's just a bunch of pixels kind of floating over top there. Um, I do want to keep my original unretouched version down below, so I'm just going to make a duplicate of my background layer there. Now, again, here's the thing. When I liquefy this background layer, it's not going to liquefy the retouching. I will show you how to get around that, the step you'll do afterwards. But let me just pop into the liquefy filter here. It's under filter, liquefy. And let me talk about how this works. It looks like I'm pushing this image around, right? I'm dragging pixels around, but I haven't. Look at that. Her hair is completely untouched. It looks like I'm in Photoshop. Look, it says Photoshop up here, except wait, I, I can't get to any of the menus over here. I don't have any of the Photoshop palettes. When you're in the liquify, it's kind of like in uh, Camera Raw, the ACR module. You're in Photoshop, but you're in a separate module within Photoshop. And, and liquify is kind of like that. And when I'm pushing these pixels around, I'm not actually pushing around the pixels in this image back here. This is what's called a proxy image, which is something that just stands in for something else. And the way this tool works is it throws a mesh over top of the image. And it's actually this mesh that we're distorting. If we actually were pushing those pixels around in real time, it would soften the image if we did too much pushing around. Like maybe I was trying to do that um, uh, 1920s kind of flapper hairstyle with that very kind of wavy sort of hair. And I said, oh, let me just push this down, push this up, push this down. No, wait, let me put that up. No, let me push that back down again. Every little push that I did would soften up the image. And it, you think, well, you can, you can do small things without doing softening or without blurring the image. Not necessarily. Any transformation you make, whether it's a, I mean, a scale, obviously, if you scale it up, it's going to get a little bit blurry. But even a simple <laughs> rotation, you know, well, how can a rotation soften the image? Think about the, the Photoshop canvas as that document that's open and the image is sitting over top of it. Your canvas is a grid, you know, columns and, and rows of pixels. The image is a grid of pixels. Imagine you did a slight rotation. Suddenly, the pixels in your image don't match up with the pixels in the canvas. It's got to recalculate how they're going to drop in. And if you break it down even further, imagine just a simple vertical line, one pixel wide, black line on a white background. Just do a slight rotation. Oh. Uh, it has to go downwards, skip across, downwards, skip across. You'll get this kind of blurriness to it. And that's going to happen any little move that you make. And if you're playing around with a bunch of different, you know, pushing, pulling, pushing, pulling, and it was actually recalculating every time, it would get softened beyond recognition. So this mesh technique that they're using, putting this mesh and distorting the mesh, means that when you hit OK, it doesn't matter how many different moves that area made. It just looks at the final position of the mesh and moves the pixels directly there. So it saves a lot of wear and tear on the image. So what do these different tools do? Well, let's take a look at them. The, the most basic and the, the default one is the forward warp tool, and it will warp the pixels uh, forward as you push across. Now, there are some settings for it. You can change the size of the brush with the size slider here, or just like in Photoshop with the square brackets to the right of the P key. We've got density and pressure. Let me talk about these ones for a second. I'm just going to restore this. Uh, in a way, it's kind of like the hardness and the opacity of the brush. If I crank the density and the pressure to maximum, look at how that drags it across. It's like a hard edge brush. It's full intensity from side to side, the whole width of the brush. And it's like a really high opacity. It drags it a good long distance. If I bring the density down to the very bottom, it's kind of like a soft edged brush. Remember the soft edge brush, it's full intensity in the center and then it kind of fades out as it gets towards the edge of the brush. So it's kind of like using a softer brush. Um, the opacity is, you know, how, how there is it. The pressure is, it's, it looks like dragging a pencil across a rubber sheet. The harder you press, the farther it's going to drag it. If I bring this pressure down, it won't drag it as far. You need to do multiple passes to get the same distance. In a way, that's like 
a lower opacity. It takes multiple passes to get it to the effect that you're looking for. I usually find around 50-50 on the density and the pressure if you're just trying to do some, you know, maybe some slimming of like the jawline or the, the waist or things like that. Um, so that's the forward warp tool. And I'm just going to make a really nasty looking dent here. And let's talk about these reconstruct tools. I'm just going to turn the mesh off. Normally you don't have the mesh visible when you're doing the retouching. Um, so I'm going to turn the mesh off and let's take a look at this reconstruct tool. In a way it kind of just bends that mesh back into shape. If you look at the mesh you can see it just kind of bends it back into shape. But the reconstruct does it in a fairly specific way. Notice how, like imagine this is like, you know, the, the desert and you know where the wily e. coyote chases the roadrunner, he keeps falling into like canyons. Uh, with the reconstruct, the bottom of the canyon comes back up to meet the floor of the desert there. Very kind of, you know, the, the hard edge remains a hard edge. The hard point at the bottom remains a hard point at the bottom. All right, there's another tool similar to reconstruct, but it's called the smooth tool. And look at how this one restores it. Eventually they both end up the same. They'll go back to no change to the mesh. But notice how with the smooth tool the bottom of the valley rises up and the corners of the top of the valley also come down. You get a much smoother looking bend. The regular reconstruct left a fairly jagged v-notch at the bottom and the desert floor stayed where it was. The smooth gives you a bit of a smoother, the, the edge of the valley comes down, the bottom of the valley comes up, you get a, you can get more of that kind of wavy, you know, that 1920s flapper hairstyle kind of look to it. And again, ultimately they all end up at the same place, the mesh comes all the way back to where you started from. So if you've really messed something up, just grab your, uh, either the reconstruct or the smooth, and you can bring that mesh back to where you started. The next one down is the twirl tool, and it, twirls the image, just like the name suggests. Uh, if you move it around, it'll twirl faster. It'll always twirl clockwise. Anybody know how to reverse it so it twirls the other way? The option key. Oftentimes you'll find the option key reverses what a tool does. Like the dodge and burn tools. If you're doing dodging and burning, the dodge tool will burn with option. The burn tool will dodge. The twirl will twirl the opposite direction. All right, so that's the twirl tool. And you might think, well, that's, you know, what would you ever need to do that for? You'd be surprised. I was retouching um, a portrait of a, a business, a banking guy, years ago. And he was an older fellow. He had kind of a crooked sort of nose and a bit of a crooked sort of smile. And by putting the middle of the tool right on the, the philtrum, the dimple underneath the nose there, I was able to kind of straighten out the smile, the, kind of straighten the nose, straighten the smile, and it had a much more settled sort of appearance. And, and even her nose, like if I just give it a little bit of a that sort of way. There's before, there's after, like a little bunny twitching its nose. It can help kind of straighten things out a little bit. Um, oftentimes with the liquify tool, well pretty much all the time with the liquify tool, the, the trick is restraint. Discretion is the better part of valor. If you overdo it, it's going to show. Which actually, uh, uh, we'll take a look at that in a little bit. I'm going to talk about these little sliders here, the face aware liquify. It's not great in the restraint department. But let's just move down the list. We'll get to that one in a minute. Um, so that was the twirl tool. It can twirl one way or the other. The pucker tool kind of sucks everything inward. So if you want to give them like, yeah, like a, a mole, a mole eyes. Sorry. <laughs> but, you know, like if someone has like a bit of a, a bulbous nose, just a little bit of a it can kind of pull the nose downwards a little bit. Um, the opposite of the pucker is the bloat tool. That's where you get the cute kitten eyes. Is that better? The kitten no, eyes. No. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but sometimes just a little, just a little hint of, of an enlargement can give a bit of a more attentive sort of look to the eyes. And those tools are opposites. The, the bloat tool with the option key becomes the pucker tool. So these are actually like exact opposites of each other. Uh, the next one down is the push left tool, which as the name suggests, will push left. Which at first glance sounds useless. Why do you need to push the pixels left? But don't think of it as pushing left like to the left side of the screen. Think of it as pushing left relative to the direction of travel of a car. Like the driver's on the left side of the car, right? So if you're driving north, the driver is on the west side, so the pixels get pushed out to the west. But if you're driving east out towards Newfoundland, the driver's on the north. And if you're driving south, the driver's on the east. So let's say you were doing a photo shoot in a, you know, the middle of the summer and it's like really humid and the model's hair just, you can't get it to, it's just, uh, with, as long as you go clockwise around the outside, the driver of the car will always be on the outside of the curve and you can kind of loft that hair up. 
Um, if it's winter, and maybe you're getting that static and you can't get the hair to stay down, if you go counterclockwise, the driver's on the inside of the curve and you can squish things downwards. So this can be good for like slimming up, you know, kind of tucking, pushing things around. Uh, usually on like a fairly strong, like a fairly long line. Like some people will take the forward warp and let's say they want to slim up a waist or something. They're like, oh, just push, 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 push. And you can get a bit of a wavy sort of look to it. The push left can be used a little bit more discreetly, and more kind of even across the whole length of it. We've also got the freeze mask. Anything that goes underneath that red mask can't be affected. So maybe I wanted to give her a bit more of a smile and I don't want to damage the nose there. With that, I could grab just the corners of the mouth and I could pull it. But notice that the nose doesn't get affected, okay? Um, if you decided you did want to do something to the nose later, we have the thaw mask where you can remove that protection and now the nose can be moved around as needed. I'm just gonna I'm just going to restore that. <clears throat> now, if your computer has a video card, a graphics accelerator, uh, and you click on this, you'll notice that when you hover over different parts of the face, different shapes will appear. If you click on them, you can play around with the lip height, uh, the width of the lips. If you don't have a graphics card, no problem. Over on here, you do still have the, the, the sliders. So it'll, it'll find the faces. If there's two people in it, it'll be face one and face two. And you can play around with the size of the left eye. You can play around with the height the width, the tilt of the left eye, and same deal on the right side, you can play around with the right eye, um, the distance between the eyes. And like I said, restraint is not its forte. If you're trying to give somebody a bit of a more of a pleasant sort of smile, you'd probably, you know, pull up the corners of the mouth, but is it just the corners of the mouth that move when you smile? There's a whole lot more muscles involved, isn't it? Like under the eyes, everything kind of goes. The smile for this, I find, it's more disturbing than anything else. Um, but you can play around with the thickness of the lips, things like that. So, uh, yeah. Um, but I, I find the forward warp, like if I did want to give someone a bit more of a smile, it's not just the mouth that would go. You'd have a little bit of like, you know, kind of under the, okay, maybe I should play around with you. Like I said, around 50-50, I find, is a pretty good starting point for those tools there. I, you know, this would come upwards a little bit. This would come upwards a little bit. If you want to give them a little bit of a, you know, kind of a tuck in there, Again, think of it as like a soft brush, full intensity in the center of that circle and kind of fading out. If you put the center of the circle right on what you want to move, maybe I want to kind of nudge this cheek in a little bit. Just click and just a little bit of a nudge, just a little bit of a nudge. Yeah. And if you want to see a before and after, you can turn the preview off and on. If you have multiple layers going, you can show the backdrop and you can play around with the opacity of it. Yeah, that's actually kind of creepy as well. And when everything looks good, you just hit OK, and it processes it out. Back into, come on you, there you go. And there's the before and after. Now, here's where that, uh-oh, I liquefied it right out from underneath my retouching comes in. There's the before, and there's the after. Actually, didn't do too badly here. If you need to bring that retouching back into line with the layer down below, take a look at this. Under filter, well, there's my liquefy again, except, wait a minute, there's no three dots after it. To do the initial liquefy, we went here, liquefy, dot, dot, dot. What do those three dots mean? Yeah, more options. Something's going to pop up. I have some controls. This one, it'll just run whatever filter I ran last. If you ran a sharpen filter and you look under filter, it'll say sharpen. And if you choose it, no windows will pop up. It'll just apply that sharpen at whatever it used before. So with the liquefy down here, if I click on this, it will apply the exact same mesh that it applied to the background copy. So when you hit OK on the liquify, it applies the mesh, bends everything into shape. Then you select your retouching layer, go under filter, and hit liquify again, and it will apply that same mesh. And you might have you know, some adjustment layers, things like that up above. Anything where you had something that was lining up with the image down below, select it, filter, liquify. It'll apply the same mesh to it. Guys, she, she noticed something kind of interesting. Um, if we take a look at, let me just pop that back into liquify here, filter, liquify. If we play around with the eye size, this, the, you know, the cheeks, the eye distance, nose, all this kind of stuff like that, we can really mess up the face and then you're like, that's no problem, I'll just restore the whole thing. The restore all button isn't available because nothing has been done to the mesh. If we zoom in there, the mesh is, uh, well, relatively unaffected. So the liquify of the face aware is different than the liquefying of the mesh. So this will restore the mesh, but not the face wear. If you've really messed things up on the face, you can reset all the stuff up there. Okay, so it's two separate features of the liquify.